Well, this is a very exciting moment. Um, I just was back at the house and I got a call from Pepe that there is a baby goat on the path, which means that Millie gave birth. So, um, you know, kind of bummed that I missed it, but I think Pepe missed it too. It's really hard to catch farm births, but so exciting. So we're going to see the baby right now. Let's go. Before it gets any older. Side of that, that uh, like marshy pasture. Wow. And they're actually like kind of like walking off the road, starting to eat a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. So I'll I'll, I'll be he's, right over. He's walking up to me right now, so he awesome. just noticed. So yeah. uh, you know. Anyway. Perfect. Fun times. I'll be right over. Okay. Fine. All right. <laughs> so Carla, I mean, yeah, Carlos called me, and. Vida and Caramelo, the bull and the cow, have escaped their property and are walking down the road. Like, out of their property. Shocker. Mm. So, and this is... the go laundry ahead. technician is on his way. He only speaks Spanish, so good luck, Coco. But I've got to go back. I've got to go help with this. Awesome. Um, the washer is not working. It works sometimes. Not other times. Okay. Sirve a veces y a otras yeah, veces, veces no. no. El siglo de es, exprimir. Mm -hmm. A veces sirve, a de veces exprimir. no. Exprimir. Exprimir. La, las ropas quedan mojadas. Okay. The clothes stay wet claro. when they're done. He can call me or send me audio messages if he needs to talk. The receipt is there. Tell him we've been having problems with the washer for, you know, two or three times already. There's Since already the very beginning of having times, it. So. We need to figure out what's going hey, on. Hey, don't forget Beefy. <laughs> Beefy often gets forgotten on the porch because we powwow, we drink coffee, we hang out with our birdies, and then Pepe usually has some huge burst of inspiration or somebody calls him or um, something happens and he jumps up and runs away and Beefy gets left on the porch. But this is the start of a Monday. We are... Figuring, we have our work cut out for us always, and we're figuring out what needs to be done this week. Some of the stuff we already talked about and already knew about, and then other stuff is continuously arising. Um, it's going to be a big week, though, especially for Pepe. Um, let's see if I can even remember all the things. Um, we're getting a um, our greenhouse built on our um, on the front of our house this week, so that's pretty cool. Actually, the back of our house. This is the front of our house, and on the back, we're gonna now have a greenhouse. Um, new stuff with Alanis, and we have to make a trip to San Isidro, which is um, uh, one of the bigger cities in Costa Rica, and it's like a couple hours away to have our car inspected, and also drop off my iPhone, which I use to record a lot of this content, pretty much all of it. Um, have to drop it off at the Costa Rica Apple store so that they can mail it all the way to San Jose because my charge port is messed up. And that's actually causing a lot of problems for being able to get this content from my phone to the computer to edit it and upload it and all that stuff. So I'm gonna have to ship my phone away for a couple weeks and make do. Um, so yeah. Those are the things I can rem remember right now. It's gonna be a big week, and we're gonna do our best to show you all of the highlights. So come along for the journey. Something that I am super duper excited about. We have about like 10 or 11, I think, baby piñas starting to grow in our yard. These are the OG plants. Every time we eat a pineapple, we take the top off and plant it in the ground and it eventually turns into its own plant and starts to flower and create new pineapples. So these plants we put here three years ago when we first moved here and they have been slowly, slowly developing. And so you can see here, this is the development. Um, starts as just like a little flower bud and then it emerges and turns into a little teeny pineapple and then it grows and starts to turn golden yellow and the pineapples that we've grown in our yard so far have all been so extra sweet and delicious and small and cute. So that was three, 
for. <sighs> well, that was pretty non-eventful. I'm sweating a little bit, but um, yeah, I got them back to where they needed to be. I couldn't film it because they were kind of starting to leave and it was just me and two cows and two ribs, so I couldn't also film. But you didn't miss much. They were just like looking at me. I roped them real quick and they followed me back into the pasture. I did have some grains in a bucket, so that really made it easy. Um, but yeah, at first I was like, could they be out of food already? Like there was so much grass there. How did, you know, that to me is like, one of the main reasons why the cows would escape is that there's they've run out of food. But I realized as I was walking around the pasture, they have a ton of food left still. What's What they're missing is their queen, uh, Blanca, is back at home, and they're not used to being a park like that. So we've kind of, um, by putting Caramelo the bull and Vida, um, who's about to give birth in a few months, she's still not like, a cow yet. She's not given birth. She doesn't have her like matriarch uh, queenliness. So she's not, she doesn't feel like a leader yet, but I think this will help her. Um, I think this will help her become her own woman and she can become a queen of her own, of the pastures where she's at. So um, yeah, I need to shift here because the road is crazy. So I think that, uh, anyway, the farm, Carlos's, Carlos and Sarah's farmhand is over there and he's working on the fence some. It's definitely a little weak, so he's adding a whole other strand of barbed wire on the bottom so they can't, they don't have so much room to slip out from under. And then he's also making a, another uh, fence that will keep them in the farm area and not allow them to go out towards the house and towards the road like they did today. So we're making small improvements. I'm really realizing that I need to go there probably every day, maybe every other day I can get away with just to visit them and bring them some grains and let them, let them know that everything's okay. You know, they cows get used to certain people too, right? And I'm usually visiting them two or th sometimes three, three times a day. Um, and now that's only happening for them times a week so anyway I may need to head over there once a day just for a little bit and check on everything for a while that is how life goes out here you've got your cows spread around and uh, your uh, <laughs> your farm family is sort of spread throughout the neighborhood you gotta kind of move around a lot and be ready for anything uh, this is why I'm excited to have to be training Alanis so that I can just hop on her and head over uh, when shit hits the fan rather than taking the truck every time. But um, anyway, all's good. I don't know what else to say. Baby goat could not have possibly been born on a more beautiful golden hour evening. Look at this lighting. Wow, wow, wow. We knew this was coming, but we had no idea. Well, we kind of had an idea that it would be like this week or next actually. <laughs> so, so cool. This is our first goat birth. I'm sure she is. Hi, little baby. Welcome to the world. Are you gonna sleep um, gonna with sleep mom tonight in the yeah. shelter? Yeah. You gonna be able to walk I up the mountain or are we gonna have to carry you? No, of course not. <laughs> 
<laughs> Go to daddy. This is your baby. <laughs> He's hungry, or she's hungry, I don't know yet. Come on, Millie. Poopy already. Oh, it's coming out currently. So much poop. You'll fit right in. <laughs> it's a boy. Yay! Come on, Millie. Why don't your job be to get these assholes? <laughs> All right, everybody. On, She's like, I'm glad you're holding the baby because I'm starving. Hey, dude, you're a dad. Venga, 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 Do you give venga. a damn? Vamos, vamos, no, vamos, you don't. Vamos. That's your baby, dude. Vamos, vamos, vamos. You're the only boy goat here, so we know that it's your baby. It's gotta be. <laughs> vamos, venga, venga, venga. Hi, Ricky. Did you see the birth? Did you witness the birth? Let's go. Vamos. Come on, Ricky. Go. <laughs> Walked y'all down there this morning with three goats. And we came back with four. Venga, venga, venga. Alanis, we had a baby. <laughs> New baby goat. Can't wait to show you tomorrow. Come on, Millie. You tired? Tired from all your laboring? Come on. Your baby is up there, we gotta go. How long were you pregnant? Do you have any idea? What, like two months? Four, Four months. Does that sound right? Yeah. Blanca, do you care at all that there's a new baby here? What are you even doing here? <laughs> Giving us milk. Now we got goat milk too. All right, you sleep in here now because we can't get you up here without bringing your mom. In this barn. Come on, let's go. Let's go see the other baby. Just got called over to the barn 
and there's another baby. Lola, there's another baby. It's twins. It's it's a girl. Hola, Blanca. No way, Pepe. Hey, Coco, qué qué belleza. Qué linda. So she re she's rejecting her? A little bit. She's like, ah, oh. <laughs> another one? That's so sad. I, I, bet she'll, I bet she'll come around. I mean, she... Good morning, Blanca. You are so lovely. I am on my way down to the site of the birth to try and find... <laughs> Millie's placenta so that I can bring it up and rub it all over baby number two, which we had no idea existed until this morning. We found her down here. Didn't see her at all yesterday. Figured that there was just one kid that was born because that's often what happens with a first time goat birth. Goats usually give birth to two, but the first time... Oh, there it is. There's the placenta. Um, yuck. <laughs> and there she is. In all her glory. A little over a week ago, I was going down to the bottom of the property, the bottom of the farm, where we keep the goats mostly. And just a regular afternoon, around 4 p.m., going to go do chores. Heard all the animals back up to this spot. And I was going down with Lola, as per usual. And we get to the gate, which is almost to where their pasture is. And Lola starts growling, like, grrr, like she sees something. And I was like, what's up? And I get closer, and I see this, like, little bundle of white fluff and at first I thought it was a dog like some random dog which was very strange because there's never dogs down there and it looked like a little white poodle and I was like what the heck is this and then like all of a sudden I was like holy shit it's a goat there was, Millie gave birth we'd been waiting on it we knew it was going to be any day now Where's your mom? and so <sighs> Millie gave birth and I was expecting her to only give birth to one. Typically, goats give birth to two, but a lot of first-time moms, it's only one. And so I only saw the one there, and I was like, well, yep, she had her baby. And first I thought it was dead, because it looked like... Hi. And so I was, like, alarmed and approached it and saw that he was breathing, kind of just greeted him, petted him for a minute, and then... Went and found her. She was off in the pasture, and he's out in the trail outside of the pasture. So he obviously crawled under the fence and just slept in the path all day. I brought him back to her, and she seemed, like, completely unfazed. Was kind of not really loving that he was trying to suckle, but she was accepting it. So, like, not a great start, but it was okay. We were all excited. We bring them both up to the top so that they can spend the night in the barn together. And they seem to have a fine night. We wake up in the morning, they're kind of snuggling. Um, so Millie and her son are just kind of starting their life together. And our farmhand, Berto, arrives to work like usual and takes the goats and goes down to drop them off in the pasture. And I'm like scooping cow shit or something and working with the compost, and all of a sudden I see him coming up with another baby goat in his arms and he was like Pepe and I was like what the fuck is that <laughs> so apparently there were two babies one girl and one boy we had only seen the boy she did have two babies we didn't realize it didn't see her at all anywhere and she spent her whole first night completely alone way down at the bottom of the property next to like the wilderness forest area where there are predators it's cold at night in the summer here she had nobody to feed her nobody to keep her warm she must have stayed quiet and she survived the entire night until Berto found her 
and we brought her back up like joyous moment like here's your baby Millie we you have two this is amazing and it's a girl like it's the most important one um I wish there was a happier conclusion to that that they all kind of came together and she was like my baby but not quite Millie has so far been really rejecting the female and it happens sometimes in general the moms reject one of the one of the babies especially if they have more than one sometimes they reject their only one um even currently this is a miracle because she's letting them feed without having any grains but i've had to go through some serious hell over the past couple weeks you see how she jumped away literally sustaining millie in my arms holding her head holding her back feet so she can't kick holding her other foot so she can't jump with her other foot and literally force forcing her to feed the babies mostly the girl she doesn't want to accept the girl i don't know if it's because she spent her whole first night apart or what but it's been a real challenge she'll let the boy come up and suckle but the girl she she generally doesn't have it so i'm not going to be able to turn them loose on the pasture they're kind of staying close so that we can feed her grains because when i do feed her grains and distract her it allows nine times out of ten allows the babies to eat without problem but you can see she sometimes gets real finicky and I have to hold her like this sometimes even more intensely I don't take no for an answer I've had a really hard time with Millie over the past few days accepting the fact that she is a terrible mother so far um, may give her one more chance, another round of, of babies to see how she does, but it's not looking good for her, uh, her permanence on this farm. If she doesn't shave it up, we're selling her ass because I'm not dealing with, um, animals who can't mother or don't want to. We don't know exactly the best path forward. Um, this is a new, first of all, goat birth is a completely new experience for us in terms of it being our own goats. Um, so we've never really experienced first time goat mom. So we're hopeful that maybe she'll get better as time goes on, but if not, she's out of here. And it looks like I will probably be, probably be able to release her and the boy out to pasture in the next few weeks um but not the girl because she doesn't let the girl feed at will so i will probably have to bottle feed her which means i'll milk her out in the morning and have her close to me during the day while they the boy and millie are out on pasture and i'll bottle feed the girl until she's old enough to just be eating mostly grass and um, see where that brings us. If she turns into a great goat, I'll probably boot her ass out and keep her daughter. And that would mean I'd have to get a new male because the current male we have is her dad. But if she's a good enough goat, if she turns out to be a great goat from being raised by us so close to the house and with a the bottle, then it's always an option. Millie was also pretty much raised by us, so, and she turned out to be a terrible bitch, so, <laughs> um, you never know, but we're trying, trying our best, we're improving things for them, we've just given their whole pen a makeover, it's still in process and progress, but, um, they've got new platforms to sleep on, a little bridge connecting them, some drainage, uh, canals for their excrements and waste and um, some eating areas so yeah just learning living and trying not to let the frustration overcome me with the fact that she, Millie isn't making things easy for us or her um, 
but there's no convincing her that this is her baby and she needs to feed her just the same. So that's really frustrating, but we can't really do anything about it. So here we are, everything's fine. The farm's most horrible creatures. And it is for all of these reasons and more that we have decided to give our very own Millie this year's first Asshole of the Month Award. We are very proud to announce that she is the first recipient of this most prestigious award here on the farm. <laughs> what do you have to say for yourself, Millie? Yeah, as per usual. Everything is fine. <laughs> They're better mommy than their actual mommy. Yeah, you actually care about them. very sad though that their mommy doesn't care about them and if we weren't really monitoring and facilitating the care she would have left them for dead isn't that terrible it's terrible 